truth. Praise God, we have a couple birthdays that we're celebrating. Um, we're we're going to try to stay on top of it. Hallelujah. We got beloved Ashley Franklin here. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Amen. Come on up. And, uh, oh, it just gets gooder and gooder. We got Brandon. Brandon Newton. Hallelujah. Come on, brother Brandon. Come on, brother Brandon. Love you more than you love me. Hallelujah. Love you more than you love me, brother. Praise God. Hey, hey, there you go. The whole family, the whole family. Brother, the, 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 yeah, yep. Yeah. Yep, y'all told, huh? Praise God. So uh, who, who else? Who else has a birthday? Good word. No, no, we're going to do halfway through the song. Halfway through the song. Huh? Did you see, you gave her an out. You gave her an out. She said, now she said she liked your idea. So, all right. So we're going to go, we're going to do this. By, by a round of applause, who should wear the hat during the song? Yeah. <laughs> you know, she's the loudest one. <laughs> You're so beautiful. You got to take that hat off. Hey, so, so it was brought up today as far as the sanitation of this hat. We do Lysol this hat every, every, every time, all right? So it don't got no cooties or nothing like that. And plus we're in God's house, amen? But uh, everybody stand up with me. We're going to sing to our brothers and sisters. Just say bro and sis. Um, you know, just say bro and sis, all right? Are you guys ready? Let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday. How many think Brandon should wear it the whole service? <laughs> you, like, you like how he act like I'm not even saying nothing? He's just like, I'm done with this. It won't be the first time. Praise God. I ask for your prayers as always. Hallelujah. Um, so something happened Sunday. I need to tell you this. Um, Sunday morning before coming to service, Holy Spirit said that the worship service, as we know, was Christmas lights on Sunday. But Sunday morning before coming here, Holy Spirit says, I want you to say Christmas tree. And I want you to talk about Christmas graces for Friday night midnight service, our candlelight service. I need your prayer because uh, pastor will tell you sometimes the Lord is convicting us personally. And, you know, you start to put things together. And then Father God says, no, nope, that's not what I want. That's for you and I. I want something different. And so um. I'm grateful, but I ask for your prayers because I don't, I'm uncomfortable. Because I don't normally do like a series type of deal. And to me, this is kind of like something that's not only out of the box, because he's the teacher, right? He's the teacher. All Father wants from us is to worship, to bless him, right? So I ask you to just come as we are. We don't need to be fake. We don't need to have to act like we got it together. We need to stop that. Amen. Say it with me. Stop that. Because if we, if we be fake, especially in God's holy house, we're telling God Almighty, I'm the God of this problem or issue. And you can't help me. And sometimes when we're around other brothers and sisters, we tend to want to put our best foot forward, even if it's to the point of acting fake. Right? I pray that we don't do that as family. You see, I believe with all my heart that when we come as we are to the Lord, listen, there's going to be people that are going to judge you and say stuff about you. That's between them and God. But if you can just come as you are to God with all of your brokenness, with all of your focus to the Lord, I'm excited for you because, say it with me, it's a new season. 
Amen. And I thank God that I'm surrounded by brothers and sisters that we know we serve the only one true perfect one. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. And our Lord is blessed when we could just come, Brother Sidney, the way we are as his children and saying, Father, here I am. Amen. Can you say it with me? Here I am. Yeah. Hallelujah. So the worship service that we have, as, as Holy Spirit promised, is titled Christmas Tree. And I pray that you will be blessed by this. Remember, I do not care who is speaking. Holy Spirit's the only teacher. Can I get an amen? amen? Pastor, explain. Gosh, I love it when little ones say amen. It just fills all of heaven with glory. Hallelujah. I can, I can preach till I faint, but one little one like that says amen, all of heaven is filled with glory. Amen. Pastor, explain. How? How, 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 do, how are we going to approach this? When you get out of this and you're just in the service, every service, just being thankful, just being thankful that God saved your soul. I say it like this. Could you imagine if you were starving and had nothing to drink and you were on the verge of dying, let's just say in the next five minutes. Starving, nothing to drink, and you need something or you will die. Are we all on the same page? And here's God. God Almighty saying, here is the bread of life. His name is Jesus, and I will give him to you. And glory to God, I'm surrounded by brothers and sisters that said, thank you, Father, I'm hungry. And then Father God says, but here's my eternal water that flows from the throne room of heaven. He is Holy Spirit, and he is your eternal drink. So we eat, right, we partake. We're not doing communion tonight. We're going to do communion Friday at our candlelight service. But we partake in this meal. That not only did it satisfy us, right, spirit, soul, and body, but it quenched everything. And we now know that I am eternally yours, Father, because I received you, right? So the question that I have for you is, how can we judge anybody who's walking around hungry and starving? Right? How can we cast judgment on somebody that are walking around did we do anything to receive that meal? God Almighty convicted us and said, here I am. Do you receive me? So there's many of us right now that are standing in the gap for family, for friends, right? Children, relationships. I ask you, before we continue on in this service, let it all go. Well, pastor, that's a, that's, that's. That's kind of a big request. Why, why would I let it go when I'm here in church? I'm just going to lay all my requests down at the altar. God knows every request you have. God knows every desire of your heart, Sister Tatiana. He knows it all. Sometimes when we step into his presence, we can get clouded. Because we put all those needs and requests at the same level or, God forbid, even above God. And Father God is saying right now, seriously, family, I can't even continue because I fear God just like you. Father God says, I want nothing to be on the same level as me. I want my holy church to just want me to be grateful. Listen, this is the season, right? This is the season. It's, 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 it's hurtful when I hear people say, oh, the Christmas spirit. No, he has a name. It's called Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> There ain't no Christmas spirit, a uh, Holy Spirit, amen? But you notice what the world did? Oh, this is so great. Let's go, look at all this Christmas spirit. I love this time of the year. Look at the spirit, 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 spirit. We're in spiritual warfare, but there's only one Christmas spirit. His name is Holy Spirit, hallelujah. Let's give God praise for that, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So these are the books that we're going to go through. We're going to open up in Matthew 3, 16. Uh, Father God just wants to revisit the Christmas lights real quick. We're going to go into the Philippians, the book of Philippi, the church, church of Philippi. And uh, we're going to go into the gospel of Luke. We're going to hear what Lord Jesus Christ has to say about the Christmas tree. Then we're going to go into Galatians 2.20 and close out in Galatians 6. Uh, the church of Galatia was um, going through uh, those struggles as far as getting into religion 
And the Apostle Paul had to basically make his final stand. Oh, and it's going to get gooder and gooder tonight. You're going to, you're going to, I pray that you feel from Holy Spirit and, and, and learn from Holy Spirit. When I say learn from Holy Spirit, when you learn from God, you receive a revelation from the Lord. And guess what? You don't walk, talk, or act the same anymore. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I believe God is going to do that in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I plead your blood, Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for the perfect gift, my Lord Jesus Christ. That, Father God, when I open that gift, hallelujah, that you are in me, I am in you, your Holy Spirit, the eternal gift has sealed us for all of eternity. Thank you, Father. And, Father God, as we give you all the glory, honor, and praise, we don't touch it, Father. You have all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Because what you have done through Christ our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, we only worship you. You are the only way, truth, and life. And Holy Spirit, we only welcome you. So Father God, I thank you that as we plead your blood, Lord, that your light, hallelujah, Father, that your light, your presence shines within every beloved child of yours like never before, and that we are Christmas lights to this fallen world, Father. And I thank you, Heavenly Father, for blessing this message that you spoke on Sunday morning about the Christmas trees, Father. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise, Father. Thank you for charging all your angels over all of us, Heavenly Father, over every house. We are one house under you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father God, that your angels fight for us and protect us and push evil far, far, far away from us, Father. And I ask you, Heavenly Father, to just bless all Every soul, Father God, that this awakening comes because the whole world knows what this season is all about. And it's about you, Lord Jesus Christ. And we just thank you, Father. And it's in your holy, mighty, precious, most powerful, perfect name, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. And all God's beloved said, amen. amen. God bless you guys. Hallelujah. Are you all ready to have some fun? Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Three people. That's good. Good start. Matthew 3.16. All right, we're going to start here. Talking about Christmas lights now, okay? You ever see this sign out? When something says that, that means that you ain't going in, right? Is it just me? Now, we're going to talk about Christmas lights, but isn't that what that means? Sorry, we're closed. Amen? Okay, I just want to plant that seed. Praise God. Matthew 3.16 says this. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water at that moment. Say it with me. At that moment, heaven was open. So heaven was like that. But because Lord Jesus Christ is here, now look at the screen. Amen. We could stay here all night. Right? We could stay here all night long. Heaven was closed. Pastor, how can you dare say that? Did it not say? Let me go back for all you crunchy people. At that moment, say it with me. At that moment, heaven opened. This is, I, I need us to get this before we move forward. What Lord Jesus Christ, who Lord Jesus Christ do you serve? See, I serve a Lord God, agape. I serve a Jesus that is so perfect, so divinely orchestrated, being God in the flesh, that his very presence on earth fulfilled every requirement of the law. I mean, I'm talking about that because my Lord Jesus Christ came through a virgin birth, that I can say his name and I expect, say it with me, expect. I expect miracles to take place just by saying his name. Name. Say his name with me. Lord Jesus Christ. Who, who do you serve? Well, let me ask you something. Is it the same Jesus that I serve? Because I don't know. I don't really feel Holy Spirit coming from the Holy of Holies within you. I don't really feel it right now. Who do you serve? Do you serve Jesus Christ? God in the flesh that holds everything in the palm of his hand? That is seated right now at the throne of God with all authority in heaven and on earth. Amen. Hallelujah. So who do you serve? Amen. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And my Lord Jesus Christ is so perfect that listen to this. As soon as he came out of that water, now there's the way. 
Remember, it was closed. It was closed. See, there's some of us that are living a Christian life that honestly, if you're, if, you're true to you, if you're true to God and true to yourself, you're living a Christian life under a label as a Christian. You're not living a life through Holy Spirit. Mm. When you don't live a life through Holy Spirit, heaven's closed. But when you live a life in Holy Spirit, heaven is open. Is heaven open to you right now? Are you living a life of abundance? Oh, hallelujah. Are you living a life of victory? Are you living a life filled with just, oh my goodness, overjoying, overjoying fruits from Holy Spirit? Are you? If you're not, will you make tonight the night to do it? Well, brother, I've been a Christian 32 years. Tell your face that. Huh? If you're saved and you know it, clap your hands. If you're saved and you know it, clap your hands. If you're saved and you know it, then you're. Hallelujah. I love that. If you're saved and you know it, clap your hands. So let's just continue this on. So we're not closed anymore. Amen. Come in. We're open. Hallelujah. How do, you, how do you come into the kingdom of heaven? There's only one way. That's right. Isn't it beautiful that he shows us? He goes in the water, out the water, it's open. Isn't it beautiful how the written word of God will teach us so simply, but yet so complicated if we choose to get complicated with God? But Lord Jesus Christ, he's our master. Amen, beloved son of God. He's our savior. Hallelujah. God loves us. Amen. Whoo, you on fire, son. Hallelujah. On far. And he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove. I love this part. And a lightning on him. And it's beautiful because when you see this, this is the Christmas light. Father God Almighty said, this is my son whom I love. There's other translations that say, Maria, beloved. Say it with me, beloved. beloved. This is my son whom I love. This is my beloved with him. Say it with me, I am well pleased. Praise God. And once again, that's the Christmas light. That's the main Christmas light, right, that John spoke about. And now say it with me, I'm a Christmas light. Christmas light. Woo, I am a Christmas light. Hallelujah. Oh, twinkle, 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 twinkle. I am a Christmas light. I don't say this pridefully. I rebuke that. I say it because Jesus owns me. I am his property that wherever I go, nobody or no environment is going to dictate my, my anointing. My anointing is in Jesus Christ my Lord, which means Holy Spirit's presence in my life will dictate the area, the, the influence, everyone around me. Holy Spirit will do the influence. Amen. <laughs> Who's your Jesus? Who's your Jesus? Uh, Auntie, come on. I know he's right there. I'm saying, but who's your Jesus, right? Who's your Jesus? Is Jesus the son of God? The perfect son of God that left heaven through a virgin, right? Holy Spirit came upon a virgin. Hallelujah. And his very presence satisfied God Almighty to perfection. Is that your Jesus? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, when you say yes, like auntie did, right? Yes, that's my Jesus. Ooh, get ready. Because you bless God Almighty that as his beloved child, you know who I am. Hallelujah. Ooh, say it with me. Here I am. So guess what? This is what it says. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death. Now remember, this death is, Father, send me. This is the first death. The first death is, remember, God looked, the Father looked at Jesus, said, son, it's time to go save our people. That's you. Say with me, that's me. So Father looks at Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ says, send me. That's the, that's the first death. Can I get an amen? amen? How many of you agree that that right there, I can't even imagine that death. Pastor, I know we talked about this many times. Can you imagine? You're in heaven. You are God Almighty. But yet the Father speaks to you and you look at the Father and you're like, you already know as God, oh my goodness, I'm going to experience things. 
Before Lord Jesus Christ said yes to experience this first death, guess what? There were no scars in heaven. Can you imagine? You see, it's up to you and God to have this kind of intimacy. It's between you and God. I could preach till I'm blue in the face, but you could sit there and go, oh, what are we going to eat tonight? Oh, we forgot to get that. We forgot to get that Xbox. And you go on eBay to get that Xbox. You could be so consumed right now. I pray that you're not. I pray right now that you're fighting through all the distractions. Remember, the season is, as a Christian, this season is every day of your life. Hallelujah. It ain't just December. Come on now, if we're truly being honest. I've upset many people. Uh, I know many of you are like, oh, no duh, you always upset people. I've upset many people these past couple weeks. Because I'm like, you're treating Christmas as an idol. It's all about satisfying flesh and greed. You need to rebuke that. Amen. Christmas is every day. Once again, who's your Jesus? Hallelujah, right? Is your Lord Jesus Christ perfect? And then it continues on in this verse 8, even death on the cross. Why? Why would the Bible? Why? Why would it stress the death that when Lord Jesus Christ left heaven? That's death. I mean, let's just be straight up. But then it even emphasizes even death on a cross. The reason why death on a cross is for filth. It's for the sinner. Murderers, adulterers, rapists, every garbage thing you can think of from the devil is how you die on that cross. And this is God saying, look at my perfect son who left heaven. God made that payment, right? You ever try to pay for something at Walmart but don't let go of the bill? You don't do that looking like this. They'll call Sarge quick. Have you ever tried to pay something and go, they'll, they'll tell you, oh, it's $25 or whatever it is, and you give them whatever, $30, and you just don't, don't let go of it? Sometimes we got to preach this way, right? Right? If you don't let go of it, did you pay for it? No, your, your intent is good, but if you walk out of there with it, you stole it. Right? You see, God, he let go. He let go of the biggest pain. The biggest bill ever known to man. The biggest bill that only his blood can pay. And he put it out there and he said, son, you got to go. And he said, okay, daddy. I want to go because PJ's worth it. Okay, daddy, I'm going to go because mom Deb is worth it. Okay, daddy, I'm going to go because Sydney's worth it. Okay, Daddy, I'm going to go because Christian, he's worth it. Are you that intimate with God Almighty? You see, it's no longer about religion. It's no longer about how many days I go to church or what. It's intimate where you know the price that was paid for your soul. And you, you ask yourself, what can I possibly do, Father, to bless you? Right? What can I do? It's no longer about, oh, well, I've been in church already Sunday. I don't need to go to Wednesday. Is really that the heart that you want? You see, I'm the kind of brother, a pastor, to challenge you that if you feel that way, are you prepared to answer to God when you see him eye to eye? Because, see, he knows your heart. He knows. And glory to God, I am so thankful to have this worship service to tell you. If that's something that we're struggling with, will we make tonight the night and just crucify it? Amen. Say it with me, crucify it. And that leads us to Luke 9, 23. He said to them, this is Lord Jesus' mouth out of the gospel of Luke. Lord Jesus says this to all of us. Say it with me, us. If any man or woman will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Let him take up his cross when he gets saved, let him take up his cross once a month.
Now let's get gooder and gooder. You are on fire, auntie. Let, let's get gooder and gooder. So now that Father God says, take up your cross daily, how many times a day? Whoa, hallelujah. All day, every day, amen. And that's the beauty of this picture right here. Hallelujah. Let's say it with me. I, that's exactly what I thought of when I put it up there. When you sent that text, I got a little crunchy. But fate said just to move over. You could ask sis. I was like, they ain't going to be there tonight, but praise God. Say it with me, Christmas tree. This leads us to Galatians 2.20. And this is what Father God wants to show us in Galatians 2.20. And I pray this picture, I got it on my personal computer, blesses your heart. Because in Galatians 2.20, it talks about the Christmas tree. And this is what the Christmas tree says here in Galatians. I, say it with me, I. I. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Brother Logan, you know that Christ lives in you? Amen. So you also know that when you make a decision to put stuff into your body that's not of God, that you're killing Holy Spirit in you, right? Amen. I love you. I just got it. I preach this. I'm not picking on you. I'm, listen, whatever you're doing is between you and God. I'm just saying, right? You know what? To bless you, let me just cross my eyes real quick. Okay? I'm not looking at Logan no more, okay? Michelle, are you crucified in Christ? So you know that Christ lives inside you. Amen? So do you know that whatever you do, that Holy Spirit right now is inside of you? Amen? Maria? Just been baptized in fire. I can see Holy Spirit fire all over you. Hallelujah. Is Jesus Christ your Lord? And you died in Christ, didn't you? And does his spirit live inside of you? Sister Laura? And it's amazing now because you know I'm no longer my own. Right, Brother Larry? I know, man of God. Say with me, I'm no longer my own. Sister Stacy, you know, you died in Christ. Hallelujah. I thank God for your obedience. Look at them angels right there. Hallelujah. Full attention in Jesus' name. Only Holy Spirit can do that. Amen. Because I'm boring. Only Holy Spirit can do that. Glory to God. And you know that Christ lives in you. So you also know that whatever I do, God is in me. So I will fight. To keep this holy. Amen. Elena, you're on fire, girl. Let's talk. Elena, you know you are crucified in Christ. Amen. You're no longer the same. His Holy Spirit lives in you. And he continues to change you and mold you, right? Does that mean we're perfect? <laughs> Come on now, Brother David. Come on, preach this. I'll take this microphone off. She said he's the only perfect one. Let's give God praise for that. Amen. Christ lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. So now we're talking about our value. Right. When I know that I'm crucified with God Almighty. When I know that what God did. You feel how intimate this word is? The intimacy of this word is, you know, Lord Jesus Christ experienced that first death, leaving heaven. Why did he leave heaven? I want to heal Amanda. Amen. Why did he leave heaven? I know that the enemy is going to try to take Amanda. I'm going to come. And I'm putting a stop to it. Because I know what he's going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the truth, guys. This is the absolute truth. But it's between you and God. You see, I purposely surround myself with worshipers, Sister Stephanie. W worshipers. Well, Pastor, explain. I'm talking about all we want to do is bless God, not just in service. Hallelujah, it's great in service because why? We're, we come with our offering. 
right? We come into God's holy house with our offering. What's the offering? First and foremost, you. Amen? Say with me, me. You're physically here. You're doing the impossible, which once was impossible, before Lord Jesus Christ came. Which means you're coming into God's holy house, his presence. First offering, you bring yourself. Second offering, praise. Father, thank you. Now how do we, ex how do we express that offering? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Maybe it's sacrificing some pride and saying sorry to somebody else. Maybe it's sacrificing money. A few of you got a little bit taller. Just unclench your butt cheeks. I'm not trying to dig in your pocket. It's God's money anyway, okay? So get over it. Amen. Amen. Get over it. All right? Hey, it's amazing. You say money, everybody says. What else? What else could it be, right? Obedience. Maybe it's something that you put, remember, maybe it's something that you put as an idol in your life. Father God says, I want that at the altar. And I don't ever want you to think about it anymore. Amen. Say it with me, Christmas trees. No matter, how, no matter how you look at Christmas trees, the bottom line is just, it's all about this tree right here. Amen. It's this tree, it's this tree that Lord Jesus Christ was nailed to. It's this tree. You see, we like to get a little pine tree. We like to put the pine tree in our house, put up the Christmas lights, right? And the ornaments, and we put gifts under it. But Father God wanted this Christmas week to be something very special. Not only is it an awareness, an awakening, not only is it life changing and shattering, but Father God says, this Christmas season, hear me now, this is going to be something that a lot of people don't understand, but you will get it because Holy Spirit's the teacher. Father God says, Christmas is not about celebrating the past. Christmas is all about celebrating our future. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Man, I love you. So when, when I say that Christmas is about celebrating our future, you see, we talked about the Christmas lights and that we're all lights. There's only one way you can be a Christmas light. It's only through Christ. Amen. Remember, it's so easy. Christmas, I love Christmas, December. I love preaching the messages in Christmas during December. You know why? I love saying mas, especially at a Mexican restaurant. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mas guac. Mas guac. Mas chips, por favor. Amen. I was a pa Hallelujah. Yeah, I was a pastor the other day, and I was like, man, this is how I get in trouble. I like to say those little words, and I sound like I'm fluent in Espanol. But I really have no idea what I'm saying. I'm just saying... Mas chips, por favor. Gracias, Señor. Dios te bendiga. You see, I sound like I'm rapping, right? But guess what? All I said is, can I get some more guacamole and chips? And God bless you. And guess what? You'll hear me say that like a broken record time and time and time again. And of course, if you hear me, you're going to be like, oh, that brother's fluent in Spanish. No, I'm not. I just know how to get more guacamole and chips. That's all I got. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Galatians 6 verse 14 says this. Says this. <laughs> Suffering succotash. <laughs> says this. <That's laughs> English is hard. Don't judge. May I never. Say it with me. Never. never. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Say it with me. Christmas tree. This is all we're going to boast about. Through, bless you, beloved. Hallelujah. Woo. That was, hey, that, that was so cute and scary at the same time. <laughs> I, sneeze, I, said, I, was, I, was about, I was about to book it. That I may never boast except in the cross of Lord Jesus Christ. Say it with me, Christmas tree. Through which the world, oh my goodness, listen to this family. This is the power 
of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the power of agape, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. This is the power of God in what he has done through Christ. The world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Let me explain. God completely severed the attachment of you and this world because you are a citizen, co-heirs with Christ Jesus in heaven for eternity. Amen? Hallelujah. The power of the crucifixion, the power of his blood means that whatever this world got, you ain't got nothing to do with. Amen? Amen? You ain't got nothing to deal with it. Well, pastor, what about, what about this that I'm struggling with? Okay, I'm not discounting or disrespecting the season that you're in. I'm not. I would never do that. I empathize with you, and I want to encourage you right now. If you continue in this season without making change personally in your relationship with God, being grateful, being thankful, you will stay in that season. But if you choose, if you choose, to identify what's going on, whatever it is that you're dealing with, Holy Spirit will expose it. The very next step is, Father, I thank you that this is no longer an issue in my house because I am crucified in Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. Say it with me. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is a new creation. Say with me, I am a new creation. Hallelujah. A new creation. Peace and mercy to all who walk by this rule, even to the Israel of God. Remember, I stressed to you earlier that when the Apostle Paul wrote this, he was dealing with a church that started to get cold-hearted towards God. How do you get cold-hearted towards God, Pastor? You don't care about Holy Spirit anymore. You say you know Jesus, but you're living a life of sin. What's even worse, you call on Jesus, you don't listen to Holy Spirit. This is what's worse. You call on Jesus, you don't listen to Holy Spirit, but then you start to put idols in your life. Religious idols. Statues. Statues. Repetition types of prayer. You know what God calls repetition prayer? Annoying. That's annoying. And God Almighty is saying, why would you do that when I gave you everything in one perfect package? Lord Jesus Christ. See, there's some of us right now that we are raised or were raised in religion and we carry some of that over. Listen, I don't judge you. Praise God, I don't. I can't tell you what I approve or disapprove of. All I'm telling you is, ask God. Father, is this pleasing to you? Father, do you, do you still want me to do this? He's God Almighty. He will tell you. But don't copy other people in what they do. Amen? We are all made differently. Listen, not every one of you is as good looking as me. Wow, everybody starts laughing. I love you all too. We're all, we're all made differently. Amen? So how is it that I'm going to try to be like somebody else? Listen, you just bless God to the best of your ability. It doesn't matter what a preacher says. It doesn't, want, it doesn't matter. All that matters is what Lord Jesus Christ says through his Holy Spirit. And all God is asking of you right now is, will you bless his Holy Spirit? Will you allow God to be God so that peace and mercy will rule in your life? I want God's peace. I say it every day. Holy Spirit, I only welcome you in my life, in my house, in my church. Holy Spirit, you have sealed us for eternity. And in Jesus Christ's name, we only welcome you, Father God. Anything foreign or tries to look like any counterfeit, Heavenly Father, cut the head off of that thing in Jesus' name. Any wolves that try to sneak in, Father God, though they may fool people, no one will ever fool you, Father. Get rid of them. Amen. Get rid of them in Jesus' name. Amen. Time is running short. Time is running short. And we need to be blameless. Amen. Say it with me. Christmas tree. 
From now on, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. And we're going we're gonna to close on this here, which is going to set up our Christmas graces candlelight service this Friday. I pray you all can make it. If not, I completely understand. Yes, it's at midnight. It's funny because I had a lot of people ask me. I'm like, it's a midnight service. But yet I'm, help me, Lord, right? It's like, right, you just got bite down on your lips, like, hmm. Especially when you read the text and you're like, what time is service Friday night? It's a midnight service, right? It's 30. <laughs> if y'all would stand up with me, please, praise God. Something was said that, um. I, I believe with all my heart, echoes all throughout heaven, and it's just conviction after conviction that was said Sunday that I'm still personally um, just not only thanking God for it, but it just shook me to repentance. When Father God says, how can you get more of Christ when I gave you everything? Right? But yet that's religious, and there's some of us right now, because we're dealing with a lot of things, we think that we need more more of Jesus. But Father God is saying, no, I need more of you at that altar. I need more of your sacrifice. Beloved family, when we talk about Christmas trees, as Father God said, and I thank you all for receiving it with your heart, that Christmas isn't a celebration of what happened in the past. It's our eternal future. And you are the Christmas tree. Pastor, explain. You walk and live this vapor of a life crucified in Lord Jesus Christ. You know, you know the everlasting eternal hope that we have of Holy Spirit's presence in your life. You display God's ultimate sacrifice when you don't lash out at somebody in retaliation. When you don't play this game of unforgiveness. You rise above the occasion when you know that maybe there's family, friends, maybe even church family that want to run their mouth and gossip. You rise above and say, you know what, I'm not going to do that. I'm not judging you, but we need to just pray. This is how you are a Christmas tree. When you know that I carry my cross daily. That Father God, I'm going to continue to carry my cross. And I'm going to continue to come after you because I want you to be in complete control of me. You always know when something is out of whack. Can you get an amen? Maybe when your temper starts, you know, getting a little, mm, right? Maybe your relationship with your loved one isn't on fire like it should, right? All these things right now, we serve a big God. He's going to address and fix it tonight if you're willing to come. I pray in Jesus' name that we come to this altar and we lay it all down and we leave here fresh and new, crucified in Lord Jesus Christ. Do you receive that tonight? Amen. Amen. Come to the altar. Hallelujah.